Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Kerbal of all, Kerbals of all ages. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Today, I will be going over kind of more intermediate fighter aircraft des design by going over, you know, a few different configurations. So the main focus of today's video will be on the two configurations of Delta Wing and kind of more conventional aircraft wing design. So to start, we will be build a basic Delta Wing aircraft. I'll go over, you know, advantages, um, you know, pros, cons, whatnots, and just kind of a uh, general, you know, structure on how to build one. So to start out, I guess we'll start ourselves out with a, you know, simple, simple fighter cockpit from, I think it's like an AOA one. I think that's airplane supply something. They have the same parts. So again, Delta Wing uh, aircraft are probably the easiest, I would say a good starter, uh, starting design, just given the relatively simple to make. They will give you good wing loading for not a whole lot of work. And not to mention, they generally are very, very easy to uh, to balance and whatnot. More conventional designs, you know, you have more, generally more parts. You generally have more things that you have to manage and whatnot. So, yeah. The Delta Wing design is generally the easiest and probably the best for people who are just starting out to build uh, fighter aircraft. And we'll build a single... You know, a simple single uh, one engine, uh, one engine fighter jet. Again, this I have no no idea how well this will fly, but I mean, hey, it's not meant to fly well. It's meant to meant to show you kitties how to build stuff. So, yep. So again, so you know, we have our simple I just used you know simple structural fuselage and uh, fuel in the back. Now, Delta designs again, you will have a lot of wing in the back, so it's generally a good idea to put more of your weight back there now i will kind of go on you will there is an iteration of that where you have uh you can have little canards in front you know similar to a Eurofighter tycoon typhoon not tycoon and that actually is a very good idea as one you can use those to balance not only balance out your aircraft but also give it a lot more maneuverability because you'll have potentially two sets of control surfaces at front and back that will be able to adjust pitch and angle now again, if you kind of watched the last video, maneuverability is not everything. You still have to be able to, you know, the bottom line comes down to, you know, wing loading and the ability for, you know, for your aircraft to manage those types of turns. Because also if your wings shear off, you generally are out of luck. So again, as I said, like this is going to be a very, very simple design. And as you will notice, like, you know, I will be using very, very few parts on this. So uh, where's the... Wait, wait. I think Delta's up. Uh, I want to find D. D, 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 D. Yeah, that's too far ahead. Keep bouncing back. Oh, there they are. So again, simple Delta wing designs. All right. So yeah. So we're just gonna get rid of one of these because we don't we don't need it. It's too big. So yes. <laughs> I, I'm just kind of also doing like a low wing delta. You can do mid wings, high wings, do whatever you want. It's, I'm just doing this because it's. Well, it's not even that's e that's easy. It's more just simple. So again, how we'll do it is you know we'll have. Uh, wait, no, I meant to have two of those. We'll have these as our elevators. You know, controlling pitch, and then we'll have the smaller ones controlling yaw. Now, one thing with Delta Wing designs is, while they do get lots of wing area for their size, they generally tend to be narrower. So, you generally will need a little bit larger control surfaces for roll. Oh, come on, fit. Yeah. But again, that's just a... That's just a simple... Simple one. Some poor knots. Also, you, in theory, you could actually use these for both pitch and roll. For my case, I'm just going to do it as pitch, and then we'll uh, we'll start out. You know, we'll put on some landing gear. I think in this, actually, we'll just go straight to you know the looks like we'll need to balance it anyway. Put in a frontal canard on it. Just gonna you know place your landing gear. How does it even sit? Also need a tail in this.
Oh, this one kind of set up a little bit. It's a little easier to take off. Alright. There we go. Move those wheels up. Again, this is just to make it stable and it's kind of a show, show plane, so. Again, not meant to be, you know, the best thing, but, you know, meant to be simple. Meant to be so that I could build it in, in the short time. So again, Delta Wings are, like I was saying, you they're very easy to build and they make for a good starter plane just because they're very easy to modify, they're very easy to troubleshoot, and you can generally get good performance and maneuverability out of them. Now, one con of it is, you know, the wing shape, you know, it's a little more, a little more defined, and granted, you could do kind of like a shuttle design where you have stuff coming up and then kind of going back again, you know, modify it as you want. But at the same time, I mean, you, you generally are a little more restricted in placement of certain items, you know, wing, white wing items. Also, like, uh, and as you'll see in another case, Delta Wings, you know, it's, once you kind of have this, it's a little bit, it's harder to adapt with larger air. I say harder to adapt. But you can't do as much with larger aircraft. Like out, I, I like him. Uh, like in the second design, we'll go into wing boxes. And actually, for that, I will just show you. Uh, I'll just pull up my F-15 because that is my most maneuverable aircraft, and that will kind of show you what you can do with certain kind of wing designs. So, my last thing we need is some frontal canards. And here, just throw some on. It's a pretty balanced aircraft. I would say that's pretty good. So yeah. Again. We'll see how this flies. But as you'll see, I mean it's it'll probably uh it'll probably fly pretty well. You know, it's it's, it's got decently sized wings. It's not too heavy too, so should have good maneuverability. Now, one disadvantage of the I will say of the dual uh, wing configuration, uh, dual control surface configuration, is again you ha do have a potential to oversteer a lot more and kind of lose stability. Also, because it's such a use using all moving wing parts, that can severely compromise aerodynamic profile. Oh, this doesn't have a <laughs> well, forgotten air intake. I'm I did it dumb. We'll just stick, out, stick one on the top. But again, kind of with these designs, just because you have such much larger control surfaces, there is a chance to kind of compromise potential aerodynamic profile and stability. So you may be more restricted in your uh, construction in that sense. Now, again, this is just kind of... It, it comes into implementation, more or less, but be aware of that. It's... It's always a, it's always a pain when you're like, oh, I, oh, I did test, you know, with the with wing deflection, one on. It seems like it was fine, but actually, if you do bother look at it, you will notice that it becomes severely compromised. Here, if we just turn this one, one deflection, yeah. Ooh, we're gonna go back and then, which again would make this aircraft incredibly unstable. If you drop it back. So you are, you know, I guess you'll find that with a lot of things, but again, be aware of that. Delta designs, I will say, are a little less stable in that respect. Of if you, so if you're using the front, the frontal canards, if you use just a simple, you know, a basic delta wing, that is probably a simple, stable design. Again, this is a more advanced, you use the front canards type stuff. So let's say you start out, build a simple delta wing, just kind of adjust it along your, adjust it along your line. So again, you, you know, that center of lift is just behind the center of mass. Now I would say, start out having it slightly behind, like don't never put it directly on top, especially if you have a large control services, because the slightest thing can set it off, and then you can you know go head over heels, and that's no fun. Let's turn on the. Turn on the after on this, it's a good thrust. So yeah, as you can see, that just it's incredibly maneuverable. Like, this is actually fan this would make a pre pretty decent fighter. Should I probably save this. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> Crazy for a plane I just put together. 
But again, you can see it has a lot of quick reaction, but as you can see, there is a little bit of lag, so probably need to put some more wing surfaces on it. Also, like when I arm in one, I'll become a lot heavier. This is a pretty light aircraft. But yes. Pretty fun designs. So, is there anything else I really need to say about Delta Wing aircraft? Yeah. The Delta Wing aircraft, they generally are a little more rare. I mean, uh, they're pretty... Oh. <laughs> oh, SBM. So yeah, like, you j I think the cases of most notable Delta Wing aircraft you have are... Ooh. That's why we gotta make sure our brakes are right. I forgot to mention that is... You know, check your braking because sometimes you you have too much in the front and things things lose control. That's a perfect transition to move on to our next aircraft, the more conventional wing design. Now, rather than actually building an aircraft in this case, I will just show you it through, I would say, probably my best dogfighting aircraft, my F-15. And here, let's name it Delta. Now, once you look at it, it'll probably be pretty apparent as to why it's so maneuverable. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with wing loading and power. Two of the largest things of Fighter Mafia, so yes. I know you've probably heard me talk about quite a bit about Fighter Mafia, and again, kind of a bit of a, a preview for, uh, for the next video I'll be doing is... It focuses on really three aspects of an aircraft, and that is thrust, weight, and wing loads. If you want to figure out why those are important and what each of them have to do, watch my next video. I'll try to post it below. If it's not posted below, it means I probably have not made it yet. Ah, yes. Did I, where is... Oh, yeah. I was last doing testing with... Uh, I was doing refueling testing, I believe. Where's the refueling button? Yeah, who gives a crap? All right, so yes, this is my F-15. This, again, follows a more conventional fighter wing design with, you know, big wings in the middle of the aircraft and rear-facing uh, control surfaces. And actually what I could do, and it was a design that was tested, you know, I could build an F-15 active, which actually had little control surfaces on the, on the front, you know, more frontal part as well. Not, obviously, not in the cockpit, but right there. So if I were to put the little... Uh, well, yeah. If I do these little wings, it almost would be perfect. These actually, I think, were kind of the winglets taken from that. So there. Now we have enough 15 active, and I just need, would need to put on thrust factory and engines, which aren't just fun. So again, this thing ha um, has an incredible amount of uh, lift, just because some of it's actually in part because of the boxy design, and that was somewhat intentional. Like, you pretty much, in the middle of the aircraft, have a biplane. <laughs> it's uh it's pretty good but again these types of designs just because the the big center wing and kind of and these are, oh wow these actually are pretty decently sized control services but uh the big center wing and kind of more rear facing control services gives the aircraft a little more kind of stability and precision when turning while still being able to maintain very very good maneuverability like this is so when i first tested out this fighter it was never actually it was very hard for it to get a kill because it was always shooting about two meters to the right and so i'm like why is it constantly shooting two meters to the right of it i realized the gun on an f-15 is slotted about not even it's about a meter and a half to the right of the cockpit and the cockpit's about a meter wide so i'm like hmm that's roughly two meters this aircraft is dead on it's just doesn't know that it's gun and needs to aim two meters to the right. Kind of funny. Actually, I will do a uh, kind of a bonus fight where I'll put it up against that one, though. So this aircraft again. Very large amounts of thrust. As you can see, it's pretty quick to take off. And again, it can take off pretty lightly. It's very, very maneuverable. Another thing that you'll want to uh, focus on is you want maneuverability at all speeds. You don't want an aircraft that you know, strictly gets its maneuverability from just it needs to go really, really fast, and then you you push some you push some control surfaces down, and the lack of stability just throws it around. Because again, 
that will make it where one you you're pretty much, <laughs> if you're banking on instability you're banking on the fact that that aircraft will not flip out and die if it goes too fast or and also i'd say low you will have you only crappy low speed performance which which actually i think with the exception of a few aircraft like you know, this excluded most fights are fought subsonic where you will generally not get lots of you know lots of sonic you know transonic drag so you'll have to very much operate in a realm where you gotta you gotta be neural uh adaptable also you weren't always gonna be travel even if you're, you're traveling you know you, the average speed is 200 meters per second you generally aren't gonna be like that as you saw like with this plane you're turning it it loses a lot of speed when you turn and most of that's just due to like the heavy amount of weight i was going up that type of stuff so again you need you're gonna need to have some kind of engines behind it too and again so this design again it pays itself to generally some larger aircraft i mean you can do single engine designs but two engine designs can be very very good because you can build more of a wing box into it i mean delta wings in theory you could build a wing box actually it's kind of similar to an f-15's design it's i kind of need to make it a little bit longer in here. I think that's kind of what those are for. Make it a little bit longer in that sense. Spinny spins. Again, those are really the two main configurations. You also can have um, forward swept wings and canards. Which, forward swept wings, I've I've actually had mixed results with them. Some aircraft, they just, I mean, one, just to know, and I think KSP doesn't even model it as well, but like Forward swoops wings are inherently unstable in that ca case. They're generally not going to be, you know, lost enough. Now, granted, one nice thing about forward swept wings is you can have elevators in the back, ailerons kind of farther up front, but still kind of maintain a uh, good frontal profile and kind of reduce drag. It's similar to a delta wing design, but you don't have to pull as much lift, so you can make the wings kind of sleeker. Not as big. Well, this aircraft actually retains speed. Wow. Decent glider. <laughs> but again, yeah, so. That's uh, that's one major thing with it. Cut the differences. And now on to. I know I've been talking about doing putting this up against my, uh, my F-22. I just haven't gotten around to making the video yet. I am very, very sorry. So instead, we will be doing a simple uh, match where this should... Hopefully, fingers crossed, just demolish Val and her and her crappy little propeller plane. Jeb and Bill need to win. You know, these past few times, Val has just shown them up, shown them no mercy, and now they want revenge. So, here we go. Get rid of that. Val is Val's already off. Oh wait, yeah, it's flat. Never mind. They're good. <laughs> I don't even know. Isn't that? Oh no, no, it was when I was testing. The, uh, this and the, uh, Avanti almost crashed into each other. Luckily, the Avanti pulled up before this. They would have collided. But had the Avanti not pulled up, they would have actually collided with each other and died. Also move or move. Ironic. But yeah. Okay, we'll follow the F-15. This is gonna be more exciting anyway. But yeah, and this thing is just an absolute, um, absolute killer. I, I absolutely love this aircraft. Again, if anyone ever wants the craft file, I will gladly share it. Just, you know, be nice with it, be respectful. And this is a, it's a premium fighter aircraft. Let's see. I could hear the little pink from the radar warning. And they are just, oh, and yeah, <laughs> it just goes right in and pulls a kill. Yeah, that was quick. <laughs> First engagement, it just demolishes its target. Ladies and gentlemen, the F-15 flown by Jeb and Bill. So again, that is really all I had when it comes to aircraft configurations. Now on for more kind of little tips and tricks of fighter design. So um, you're going to want afterburning engines. I mean, that's pretty much a given. Afterburners provide lots of thrust while, you know, maintaining smaller weight than just putting on really large engines. Now, whether to do a one or two engine aircraft, 
that's always people always say, all right, well, which which one should I do? Should I do one engine? Should I do two engines? And it's like, oh, people are like, oh, I'll do two because I want more power. But at the same time, you add a lot more weight. Now, again, do you want to have also a, just a bigger aircraft in general? Do you want to have a larger target? Like this aircraft, you know, an F-15 is not a small plane. I can put this up against you know a single engine. It's actually was kind of a fun fact. The F-16 was chosen because the F-15. Not so much it was too big, but it's like, we don't need this really big plane doing kind of smaller, simpler roles. So we're going to procure a smaller, you know, cheaper to operate aircraft that, you know, doesn't have as much capability into it. So again, you know, one or two engine design, I'd say that's really dependent on what you want to do with the aircraft. I mean, do you want to, do you want it to carry a large amount of payload? Do you want it to, you know, have, uh, I will say, well, it kind of depends on, again, this is kind of an implementation thing, but it's like, do you want it to have a, an internal bomb bay? type thing. Now, that's something where you might actually want to have two engines, or you might, if you just want like a small, simple you know, cylindrical one, maybe you just need one. Again, uh, simple design, simple ideas. Uh, it really goes down to, I, was, I would say, flight and purpose. Um, this also kind of goes up against, uh, you know, kind of what are you, what is your intended prey to target type thing? Like, are you going up against, like, do you have to be very light and nimble? Do you need to, uh, do you want to keep a small profile? You kind of what kind of role do you want to be? Do you want to be the fastest plane on the field? Do you want to be the most maneuverable plane on the field? That type of stuff. Also, just kind of a again wing configuration, as I was talking about earlier. That again also goes to you know, kind of what you want to do. Again, I would say for anyone who's starting out in kind of fighter design, I would say deltas are pretty simple. Again, this is a definitely a little more complex design. It takes a lot more to balance. In a lot of cases, so you do have that that you gotta work around. Uh, always add air brakes. Air brakes are key. <laughs> Most fighter planes, you know, don't slow down very well, and if it does slow down really well, that that's probably not a good thing because it means you have a lot of drag, and it means your engines are working extra hard to keep your plane going. So, again, uh, for your average fighter plane, I would say you know it should be able to go supersonic if it's using just the normal engine afterwards now this plane i think will go like a thousand meters per second just because these engines are broken that's actually kind of why i use them because they just produce tons of thrust at high speed like i've seen uh cases where it's done gun runs at mach 3 and actually i've seen it through it's done that and hits target like this thing i think can pull like 20 g's in uh let's see what are we doing right now oh yeah it can pull 40 g's <laughs> my mistake so again and that actually is a good measure of maneuverability if you have an aircraft that can pull at least so i would say anything in the 10 to 20 range is fantastic anything less i would say kind of look at what kind of role you want to be you know, are you really fast do you want to and if anyone's ever played ace combat if you know of the mig uh mig 31 it's not the most maneuverable plane out there but there will be people that will just go back and forth and get kills because they are fast as hell and they're able to engage with little to no warning. Yeah. Let's try gun run. So yes. That's really all I all I have for that. Um Control surface as for control surfaces, I would say uh again, generally use all moving wing parts for uh pitch just because you need a lot of pitch authority. For roll, again, you know, just use, just put like some, some basic ones on the end of your wings. You don't need a whole lot. Like this plane rotates pretty well and it's, again, that's actually a low speed. You don't want to over rotate too, because if you have, make a plane that spins around too much, you won't have the precision of being able to, you know, accurately find out. Like in this case, you know, it's, it, it turns out like, one one button. You know, I hold it for a little bit. It turns a lot. So if I'm trying to, you know, if I'm trying to get precision angle, you don't want to do that. So again, you do want to take precision into account when building, you know, your planes. You don't want to have just kind of a. You want to have some degree of stability, and like you see in this case, it's it kind of goes up, but it it settles pretty close. You'll see plenty of fighter planes that you know, they kind of go up and then they go whoop. Well, you can't even do in this. Kind of if you saw in the first video the the delta, it could we kind of snap around, and you don't again you know 
In my battles, at least, I generally do gun only, so if your plane is kind of snappy around when it's pitching, that makes for a very unstable platform. So you want to take stability into account. It's not something to be neglected. You know, again, don't, don't make a plane that just has too large of control surfaces and too small of wings. And really, that's all. Again, you know, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. I know I just kind of talked a lot, but, you know, again, hopefully just trying to help you, help you out. And remember, always keep that pointy side forward.